Okay, we now welcome on our very good friend, recently retired, Blake Bortles. Uh, he broke his retirement last week. He got a bunch of requests for interviews. He said he's doing an exclusive with us. So let's just start there. What is? What did it like? Walk me through what happened after you retired on this show uh, and quiet quit the NFL. Was it just chaos? It was, yeah. So I mean, I technically retired twice. I retired like four months ago. Told like friends, you know, family and close friends, and nobody really bothered me. It was great. And then after. You know, we spoke last week, then there was just kind of um, a flood of, of text. And, you know, a lot of people just like saying congratulations and whatnot. But if I get more than like two texts within two hours, like my brain just melts down and I can't handle it. So <laughs> the, the overflow of, of text messages and phone calls was a lot. I'm still getting back to people. I'm working on it. Wait, so the I, the one thing I thought of, like, you did tell your agent that you were retiring, right? Because I thought, like, that would also be very Blake if you just didn't tell your agent and he had been out there, like, trying to get you on a team and you're like, no, I actually retired, dude. And that was how he found out. Somebody told him that I told you guys. And he was like, shit, he's, he's done. No, I told him. Um, I think they changed it. Like, I, I think in the old CBA, you used to have to, like, put retirement papers in and it was out there and official. And now if you're just not on a roster for 12 months, I think they just deem you retired. So that was the route I was going. They put you in that bucket. That's, that's, that's weird. So wait, what about, what about people who are saying, Blake, you should sign a one day contract to retire a Jacksonville Jaguar. Have you considered doing that? I haven't. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like you got to play more than five years in a place to do something like that. But I think that like, I don't know if city... I made it long enough. The city of Jacksonville does love you, though. Like there, there are a ton of Jaguars fans that just love Blake Bortles. I feel like, I don't know, we could reach out to Tony. Con what if we got you a one day contract for just like a shitload of money, though? That'd be kind of yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. If we could like build some money into it job. for just yeah, press conference and some photos. <laughs> yeah, it would be fun. Um, so <laughs> what? What? How does the body feel? Like you, you alluded to it that your arm felt like shit after playing like uh, backyard football with some kids in the neighborhood. Do you think you could keep playing or is it you're just you're just like I'm I'm ready to to be done physically with uh the rigors of being in the NFL? Uh a little bit of both or a lot of things I guess. My body's fine, you know, ripping the vortex around a couple of weeks ago did a number on my shoulder, but you know, it's just from not throwing like I could still throw. Um I'm not the same as I was, you know, when I started in the NFL. I've had some 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 right arm um nagging stuff that i think's affected me a bit and um on top of that it was just i, I was kind of I, I was ready to go i was ready to be done and do something else and um you know try and go elsewhere in life wait so yeah. what is this something something else what's the next chapter for blake bortles i don't know i keep you know i haven't i made a linkedin page so we'll see if that gets <laughs> any hits but i think my lack of uh my lack of uh, work history might be slowing that down. Um, your, I don't know. <laughs> what are your passions? What are you? What are you into? If you, if getting paid didn't matter, what would you do with your life? Um, I mean, I enjoy playing golf. Like outside of football, but play golf and hang out. Um, I was never big into like fishing or hunting or anything like that. Um, okay. I mean, really, as a hot like, got two little kids, so. I mean, that takes up 90% of the time. And then the other 10%, I probably play golf. That's, I mean, that sounds like a pretty good, like, what do you like doing? Hanging out and playing golf. Yeah, I think I, I, I actually, mine is yeah. just hanging out and gambling. What you just said actually tells me that your career path should be being retired. It right. sounds like being retired is the perfect job for you right now. That's right. So, and then, I mean, you can start the senior tour at 50. So I've essentially <laughs> got 20 years to get ready for that. And, That'd be uh, great. Has anybody ever done that? Like, just played the senior tour without playing on the PGA tour? Uh, spent half their life training for it, and then turned fifty, and then was yeah. like, "Let's see if we can do it." <laughs> that should be your goal. What are you shooting? Uh, I'm all over the place. Uh, usually, like around eighty is where I'm oh. at. Sometimes play well and break eighty. Sometimes play bad and shoot ninety. So it's all over the place. That's a pretty. That's pretty good golfing. So, uh, what like what are you gonna miss the most from your NFL career. I mean, I guess you've been 
we're tired without us knowing for a while now, so it's it's already set in. But is there one thing that was like maybe keeping you like ah, I kind of wish I could go back? Um, I mean, outside of the fact that like it's all I ever did and knew, you know, it just becomes that was the routine and the daily, you know, kind of schedule you're used to having that and being in that for so long, you know, having that lack of structure and, and, you know, time commitment and all that. Um, I mean, every, like all the cliche stuff, you miss hanging out and, and BS some of guys in the locker room, but I had, I've had like a couple of days where I woke up and like, we have football, we have a little boy. So there's balls all over the house. And like, I see a ball and it's just like, man, I'd love to just have a catch today with somebody, you know, like I just want to go throw a ball and play catch don't really care to you know get hit or maybe do some of the other stuff but i'd love to just play catch yeah, yeah. there should be a like a dating app for just guys that want to have a catch with another guy yeah that'd be kind of cool thing that's right you're kind of and you're also like kind of explaining a dog's life which that's awesome right so and we also got a puppy so we're bonding over playing catch together now <laughs> I like you that. got a full life you i the I thing i've you. always loved yeah uh, loved about you blake is like it, it's not that you didn't care it's that you just you didn't let other things bother you or like people outside your bubble bother you. And you just describing your day to day is awesome. Like it just, there's no other way to describe it. It's like, I got two kids, a puppy, I golf and I hang out. There's that's, you are living the dream. That's it, man. It's awesome. I was lucky enough to be in a position to be able to do that and not worry about much. Um, but yeah, if, if being retired was an occupation, I think that's, that's kind of my calling thus far. <laughs> First ballot Hall of Famer. Yeah, yeah you're you're off to a hot start right now. Uh, looking back at your career, um, we've been talking a lot about how badly you guys got screwed over in that game in New England. You should have been in the Super Bowl. To my dying breath, I will say the Jacksonville Jaguars should have been in that Super Bowl against the Eagles. Um, but from your perspective, looking back on it, what is what is your favorite moment? Like an actual moment playing football out there. What do you look back on? And think to yourself, damn, that was that was pretty cool. One moment. Um, I mean, probably that game could have been it if the fourth quarter didn't go the way it went. So probably the week before that, like going up to Pittsburgh and beating them. Uh, but really that whole year was 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 pretty sweet. I mean, city of Jacksonville, you know, the Jags have had some bad years over the past, you know, decade or so. Um but they're, they are good fans and they care a lot. And, you know, so when we were rolling that year in 17, like it was an awesome place. Like the city was fired up, you know, it was, people were happy to just be around town and doing stuff. Um, it, it was cool to see how they responded to, you know, the success we had that whole year was awesome. But if there was one, uh, yeah, one thing it'd probably be beating Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh. It's just, you know, the, the coolest moment. And I guess the last great moment of that season before, uh, before new england yeah i mean that was an all-time game do you um do you do you keep in touch with uh playoff lenny at all have you guys have you guys mend fences after he said you had bad breath because we love leonard fournette but we still do think like that's bullshit that he outed you as having bad breath it is and one no i haven't talked to him since he made that statement and um <laughs> I just, I don't know how you come up with that. You know, I got good hygiene. I don't dip anymore, right? I cut that out, so you can't blame it on that. I feel like I, you know, I have slightly maybe above average, I'd say decent breath. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. But That's no, I haven't, I, yeah, I haven't talked to Leonard in a couple of years. Uh, not Definitely not for that or any reason, just have it. But yeah, I'd love to, to talk to him or see him at some point. He's who, uh, the best. Who reached out to you when you retired? Who was the, uh, who was like the biggest the name or the most surprising person um the most surprising person i don't know if there was one that i was like wow i can't believe you know he or she said something there were there were a couple of people that reached out that you know i if they wouldn't have said like their name and what they did and where exactly we encountered each other at i'd have had absolutely no idea who they were um but I, there wasn't really anything that was like holy shit i can't believe they said something yeah what about um i i it's just you really do have like the perfect life and you have really you you've you've done it perfectly have you are you gonna get your number retired at ucf is it retired no it's not 
because no. Bowser wears it. Yeah. 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 Bowser's rocking it. Um, I don't know. They do retire numbers because there's stuff. I got inducted into the Hall of Fame last year at UCF. I don't know if they're still doing numbers because I'm pretty sure like Cole Peppers, Kevin Smith, like there's a couple numbers hanging up, but I think guys still wear them. I think it's so hard in college because there's like 130 kids or whatever. So they need all the numbers. Yeah. We need to get you at least your number up there. So maybe it's not retired. I mean, I bet UCF last Wednesday when the news broke and yeah, they, they, they won and covered because it was the Blake Bortles night. That's right. Yeah. Maybe they could, I don't, it'd be sweet if they put a five up there right next to the national championship sign. Yeah. Or, or just That's retire, funny. retire the name Blake. We'll never recruit another Blake. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. You have to change your name if you want to come here and play. Yeah. That would be really nice. Are you watching football? Do you watch it? I watch some, like I watch, um, I've, I've caught up most of UCF games. Um, like I, I was a little wary of like, you know, how it would be like last year. I would like, I was out of the league, but I was still training. Like, so I was doing stuff. I was waiting for somebody to call me, see if we'd get in the right situation, you know? So this year it's a little different cause you know, you're not doing anything towards getting a job in the NFL. Um, so I was like, I didn't really want to sit around. So I've actually played golf on, uh, I think every Sunday so far of the NFL season. But That's I'll catch smart. like I'll get home and and see what's going on. Watch the Red Zone channel for a couple of minutes to see what's happening. Do you know if if any teams like reached out to your agent this off season to get you in camp? Um, we heard from uh, we heard from a couple right before the season started, and then I don't know I don't know if anybody's reached out. I haven't talked to my agent in a couple of weeks, so I don't know if anybody's reached out. He's just immediately told them no you know, and didn't relay that somebody reached out or if just nobody's absolutely called. So, Wait, so, so who, who reached out? We got to, I mean, give us at least one name, one name. Um, I guess it doesn't matter. Cleveland called, um, nice. obviously after the, the Deshaun Watson suspension, when they were trying to figure some stuff out, which, you know, who knows, maybe they were just feeling it out. So let's not use a different, phrase maybe for that one yeah 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 that's on me sorry about that they were uh <laughs> yeah. who else i mean were we gotta doing, they were their due diligence yeah yes. we we i mean we need to know who like because we went to denver and we sat with nathaniel hackett and we're like if you really love blake you'd have him on the team so did they reach out nope i talked to nathaniel oh i talked i was still under contract in new orleans the last time we spoke about football so we didn't talk about anything because that's, I think, tampering and illegal. Um, and then I talked to him when I decided to retire the first time. Okay. I talked to him. Okay. So he knew you were kind of retired. When yeah, yeah. talked to him. Yeah, I told him. I told him months ago, which I'm surprised because I didn't tell him to keep it a secret or anything. I just I told him I was done. And he had, when, did, we, when did you yeah, guys we, talk to him? It that was, was, it was uh, August. And it was the, I mean, it was an all time moment when I asked you for anything you had about Nathaniel Hackett and you just said that his son told you you had a big dong. <laughs> oh, Harris, or it wasn't Harrison. It was London, London. What a, st- and, but he is. Yeah. Was that like the greatest day of your life? Yeah. Top five. So you have two kids, so be careful. Yeah. Well, yeah. Top yeah, five. Yeah. It's probably like number three or number four. Just what a great compliment to get. It is. I mean, there's not much of, you know, a more mood boosting thing you can say to somebody than fresh off a of training camp practice, just feeling like crap. And you hear a six year old just give you the compliment of all compliments. <laughs> <laughs> what about the floor? The floor hasn't hit you up. I'm, I'm like going to be mad at some of these guys because like they don't love Blake the way we like if we had an NFL team, you'd be on it. You would just have you be like it almost be like a no show construction job job. You could just not show up if you didn't want to, and we'd give you a check. I appreciate that. Um, no, I haven't heard. I heard from a couple guys in like the Green Bay organization, but I, Matt's probably got he, – he's got definitely bigger things going on than worrying about what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. What a, I'm just thinking out loud here, like what if another team wanted to sign you to a one-day contract to retire as that team? Yeah, I'd probably do that. Like a team that you, a team that you didn't just, even play just, for. Yeah, so I could just add one more to like the Wikipedia list. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah, just a random team. Seahawks. Sign yeah, you for man. one day. You look, you look good in a Seahawks jersey. Yeah, you would. Or I guess like holding it up next to you. You probably not even have to put it on. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. What do you great what color you ben- combo? What are you benching these days? That's a that's a very important question. 
Oh man, I haven't I haven't bench pressed since college, like a bar. What, um, what else would you bench press? You, you do the dumbbells. The, yeah. yeah, the dumbbells. Okay. That was immediately just like all quarterbacks have to do dumbbells because it's better for whatever. <laughs> um, the dumbbells we have, we have like a little makeshift weight room in the garage, and it goes up to sixty pounds. Lightweight. So, yeah, when I'm feeling good, I get after those. Lightweight. Do you do resistance bands? Yeah, a lot resistance yeah. bands working on the stretch and for the golf swing yeah mm -hmm. what about um a lot of people were wondering if maybe now's the time to to start your construction career because you had the famous clip where sophie julia asked you what you'd be doing if you weren't in the nfl and you're like just working construction and ripping cigs so have we thought about that like it would be very funny if we just got a picture in a year of like a roadside construction crew and it's just you just having a sig during lunch break, being like, "Yeah, just out with the with the fellas, just doing some work." There is that. So uh, we're at, we're building a house, and we had a meeting the other day with the builder. And I asked him, I said, "You know, like I don't have anything to do. Is it okay, like if I just come help you guys? Like you don't have to pay me. I just want to be there and, and have something to do, and you know, a little camaraderie with the guys building the house." And he said, "Absolutely." So. We'll see. <laughs> Hell yeah, you yeah. have to send us a picture of you yeah, out there with them. Get the vest and the hat, the whole deal. <laughs> You're going to get addicted to dipping again. You know that. I know. That way, yeah, that that or cigarettes you have to do, I feel like, in that life. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So how, how long has it been since you've dipped? Um, a week. I mean, the, yeah. Yeah, the, <laughs> the occasional <laughs> – you know, they like it's hard like playing golf or doing something, and then you're with somebody, and it's just like, oof. Uh, so but like, then. I don't think I've bought a can of dip in a couple <laughs> okay. years, probably. Oh, nice. Like three, oh, nice. so you're yeah. just a mooch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I've turned into. It's just like, oh, hey, let me get one of those. Just bum and dips yeah. off people. That's smart, though. That's a good way to cut down on right. it. Right. And technically, if you never actually buy the can of dip, you never restart it. So as long as it's not my can, then. You That's know, right, fact. and it can't be a problem. Like, it can't be a problem if if it's not like coming out of your pocket. That's right. Yep. So I, yeah. What, no money of mine went towards this. So, the uh, the other Sophie Julia clip. Uh, wake up in the morning. What's the first thing you do? Do you still piss like right away? Every morning. Yeah. <laughs> Every morning. Same. Is that is that not what you do? No, I do it because like you're my hero, and I saw that. I was like, <laughs> if I want to grow up to be big and strong like Blake. First thing I do, it's not like take your vitamins, you know, do your homework, eat your cereal. It's you get up in the morning and you piss. You just go right to the bathroom. That's it. That's the That's key to it. being just an NFL quarterback. You get a great day started. That's beautiful. <laughs> um, I really want you, I really want you to come hang sometime too in New York. That'd be nice if you just came and hung out. I feel like you never leave the state of Florida. You're like no. the reverse Dave Portnoy. You you don't have to worry about your taxes because you're just there. That's right. Yeah. Um, no, I'd love to come hang out. I don't know. I've, never, I was, I've only been in New York City a couple times. Not You're a not huge really... fan, but yeah, yeah like, I don't. I, you know, I don't. Uh, I don't fit in. I don't think great right there. Yeah, you're you're a Florida guy through and through. Yeah. You're, you're, you're very relaxed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are very relaxed. That is that is like your mo. Uh, what about? Are you worried at all that retiring from the NFL is going to hurt you in Blake of the Year competitions? Yeah. I have thought about that. I'm going to have to find something else, right? Because Blake Griffin's obviously, he just signed a new contract, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you know where? Oh, we were going to surprise him. Yeah. Yep. I was going to say Boston. Yep. Um, <laughs> you know, Brooks is doing his thing. You know, um, I'm going to have to find something else to boost my resume because it's not as cool like Blake Brooks and then, you know, NBA player, professional golfer, you know part-time construction worker that doesn't get paid for it <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know i think like you are the og blake so you, you have that going it's like you are the that godfather of the blakes right we could get grandfathered in you think for a couple years until i can figure something else out yeah, yeah. i i think like you have a seat on the on the blake of the year competition for as long as you want it would you what about doing a podcast would you do a podcast with another blake i, I don't know i've thought about it but I, it's just I feel like there's a lot of people doing it like you guys crushed it you got in early you guys are kind of the ogs of podcasting i feel like in the sports world everybody's kind of doing it and i also think that like i would have a hard time 
filtering, you know, what I said into a microphone if I had to do it too often. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I don't I don't know if I'd be great at that. And they're you know, I don't know about having certain things out there that are just there forever that like, you know, my kids could listen to or like my mom's gonna hear. You know, I'd rather just save it for, for hanging around drinking beer, telling stories. Yeah, yeah, I I actually need to probably think about that a little bit. There's a lot of bad tape of us oh, out there. Oh, for sure. It's, I, but I, once no, you get, it's you a, guys you get to a, a point, job. no. But once you get to a point, it's like, yeah, I've said some shit. What are you gonna do? Like I've yeah, said yeah, so yeah, much yeah, shit. Yeah. You know, like I've been taped for a decade plus every single day. I just pretend right. that he doesn't listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the yeah, same yeah. thing. Yeah, you guys no have one done knows. it for so long too that it's like there's nothing that you're gonna say while being recorded that's worse than something you previously said. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Like we, you know, we've maybe it flooded... cracks the top ten, but yeah, yeah, we buried ourselves. We flooded the zone with so much crap that it's hard to that's right. make anything else stand out. Yeah. Um, Do you know how much money you made uh, in the NFL? It's pretty cool. Uh, no, I mean I know like contractually what I made, but I didn't get like the back half of my second contract here, and then taxes. Uh, oh, do you know it, like the exact says, number? It says forty-seven million. That's fucking awesome. Sounds right, man. That's awesome. Yeah, dude. That's... <laughs> how you cool? Know, just good how cool enough is that to uh, yeah, steal some money. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> fucking sweet. Like when you say it, and you're just like, "Oh yeah, I did make forty-seven million in like seven years of work." That's, that's right. pretty fucking sweet. Suck it, nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Score one for the oh, good guys. Love it. I, I love it. Love it. <laughs> I love it. Like, what what uh, pieces of advice do you have out there for any 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 youngsters? Any youngsters coming up, whether it be in college football or just hanging out, just outside of sports. How, just in general. Yeah. How yeah. how how should people try to live their lives to be more like Blake? <laughs> um. I mean, yeah. Finding a way to make some money playing a sport's always a great thing. So if you're able to do that, you know, more power to you. Um, I don't know, man. I always like, even while playing football, like we kind of, it was, um, like you obviously, you take your work very seriously and, you know, everything you're, you're getting paid to play football, and especially as a quarterback, you know, you have to make sure, um, you know, that you're kind of keeping a clean profile and doing the right things and saying the right things and all that and representing everybody that, you know, supports you. Um, but like for me, it was like, you know, Make sure you're prepared and working hard. Play as hard as you can play. And like outside of that, have as much fun as possible and just don't get in trouble. You know, yeah. I struggled at times doing the back part of that. But, you know, I think as long as you enjoy what you're doing, you're lucky. If not, then uh, when you don't have to do it, enjoy something else. What about what about any regrets? My life advice. Um, yeah, I mean, that. yeah, there's a lot. No, come on. Just in in general in life, what regrets do I have? Yeah, just I mean, it seems like, I mean, you objectively have had an enormously successful career. Like that's just a fact. Like you, you got to the highest level of your game. You got paid what forty seven million dollars. Yep, forty seven. Like from a business standpoint, you are. You should do a business podcast. Yeah, I think that would do well. We could talk stocks. We could talk investment <laughs> portfolios. Like, I, I mean, the numbers of advice. The numbers don't lie. You are like a you're a businessman. <laughs> I am a businessman. Oh, <laughs> uh, um, yeah, dude. I don't. I mean, yeah, it's kind of crazy to uh, to think about. You, you played football. Started playing football when I was five, and was lucky enough to play till I was thirty, and was able to do some of that stuff. Because if not, we might be working construction, ripping six. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Um, all know. right, Blake, I, I have one last question for you. Wait, I, I, I had oh, something before. Go uh, ahead. <clears throat> I, was, I was doing some reminiscing of my own before this interview, and I, I realized that the history of Blake and, and Super Bowls, I, I just wanted to rattle through these. Maybe you have some memories or like can, can, oh, yeah, some history. But 2015, or no, 2016, part of my take was still in the womb. It existed, but it wasn't out to the world yet. You did a casting couch interview with Eric Ebron and Jabari Price. Uh, that was chaotic. 2016. That was in Super San Bowl. Francisco, right? That was in San Francisco. San Francisco, yep. 2016. Yeah. yeah. What were you My say? marketing guy was like, hey, these guys are, you know, they're kind of like busting into the sports world and 
Um, I don't know. Had you guys interviewed any NFL quarterbacks at that time? I don't think so. No. And I, that and was that the one where it I, wasn't even like a, yeah, it wasn't even a plan yeah, to do those interviews until like, we got there. Yeah. Right. That's what, yeah. He's like, oh, nobody really knows much about him. And like, I obviously knew a little bit about Barstool. He's like, I don't think anybody's doing it. And kind of like starts explaining it to me. And I was like, yeah, dude, absolutely. Let's go to them. That was uh that was the Super Bowl that Dave had bought his flight and a house in San Francisco before the Super Bowl, but like before the playoffs. And it was the famous one where he didn't account for the air when the Patriots played the Broncos. And he's like, <laughs> I just fellas, I just didn't account for the air. And we had the we had the house and we had the the R V and we like he begrudgingly was like, Fine, we'll just go. And then we just started interviewing people on that R V and I had the picture with you where I found and I don't know where I got that jersey, but it was like size that extra youth small. jersey. Yeah, yeah, I looked <laughs> that was good. Awesome. All right, yeah. sorry, Hank. Go ahead. 2016, the the party Super Bowl party to end all Super Bowl parties. You and Jared almost burnt down the Totino's house. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that was that was that was my personal favorite memory. That's when you know you and you and Jared became became my guys for life, legends for life. That was that was an amazing moment coming back to the house. It smells like smoke. And I go into the kitchen. And there's there's Blake Bortles and Jared Goff, and they're starting a fire in the kitchen because they can't figure out how to cook Totino's pizza rolls in the oven. Do we accident something? There was an extra zero or something that got added. Like we put them in there for an hour and thought it was like a minute or two, and then just forgot. <laughs> That was then, when uh, wasn't it that when we were in an Uber and Hank was just wandering down the side of the street and we picked him up. Yeah, yeah, I was. I, I all right. I was reminiscing. To drive by him and was like, "Holy yeah. shit, that's Hank!" <laughs> yeah, I was. I, I I was trying to remember if that was you or not. But yeah, I was like, I think we went to the house together. Yeah, 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 yeah and that did. was also when Hank and Blake both saw Dave getting head because <laughs> <laughs> his windows so were open in his room. <laughs> Just yep. an all-time funny night, and then uh, I mean, we interviewed you in at in Minnesota. Wait, in the- one other, one other for the 2017 Super Bowl or 16, whatever it was. Um, Houston, Houston. Uh, that also, I can't remember if it was you texting me or Jared texting me, being like, I think it was you texting me, being like, "Hey, do you know where Jared is?" And I was like, the next morning, and I was like, "What are you?" Are you really asking me like how like I don't know where Jared no, is? No, I think it was reversed. It was reversed yeah. probably. It was Jared yeah. asking where Blake oh, is. Oh, it was. Because <laughs> yeah. we had a like, flight. My phone yeah. died. I don't know what ended up happening later that night, but my phone died and we were flying out at like nine AM and like I remember, you know, kinda exiting everything and then being like, dude, like flights at nine, don't miss it. And, you know, just pulling up at an uber telling the guy to, to go as fast as possible out on the tarmac at like 859 just popping out like we yeah. made it yeah and that was one of those moments where it was like what is my like there's one nfl quarterback texting me asking me where the other nfl quarterback is and i was like what is going on right now like what this is <laughs> this is a wild thing to be in a part of but uh that was yeah that was an all-time night all-time uh party that was special all right Interviewed you in Atlanta or in Minnesota on the bus. I don't think anything crazy from there. Just yeah. in the in the van, and then the Atlanta Super Bowl. Wait, that was a Man of the Year year, right? Yeah, you were yeah. there for the Man of the Year. Atlanta should have won. Do you yeah. think you got fucked over in the Man of the Year competition? Well, I, yeah, I didn't know Chris Long was supplying like a whole continent with water. Like, <laughs> I don't think any of us would have gone. Somebody actually said that to him, like, "Bro, why didn't you tell us you were like supplying all of?" I don't. Even, I don't want it's to all Africa, Africa. Africa. Yeah. yeah, it was something like that. Yeah, it was like a yeah. co- I don't know if it was a couple of countries, but it was essentially like dude supplied like a whole continent with water. It was like, <laughs> yeah, no shit, he was gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Atlanta Super Bowl, uh, Patriots won. I was going into the after party. My friends from home were there, and then Dave and like a bunch of people from Barcel also didn't have tickets to get in. So I was like, <laughs> all right, I'm gonna get in. I'm gonna try and I gotta. I'm just gonna get in and figure out a way to get all these people in here once I get in. I saw you at the bar downstairs. No one was even there yet. And then I was telling you my situation. You took took the pass off your neck or like, here, I'm not saying for this party. Take my pass. It was. I think you were there for NFL Man of the Year, too, because it was like an all-access pass that you could just walk in and out. You didn't need a ticket because you were staying at the hotel. So I was able to take that pass and then get like all my friends from home and, and like 10 other people in one of my favorite nights I've ever had, and that was all because of you. That's all Blake. That was like that was, and then you got everybody in, and then Dave was in there for like ten minutes, and they tossed him, didn't they? Yeah, or like he he like came and left. It was like, uh, yeah, I forget I forget exactly what happened, but 
That yeah, if, was, if if it wasn't for that pass, because I think in the in the previous ones it was easier to do pass backs, and I was like, oh, I was telling people, I was like, oh, well, you know, in the past two I've been to, it was kind of easy to get people back and forth, and I got in, I was like, this is gonna be a problem because it was like you had to have a ticket. Once you gave them your ticket, they took your ticket. So I was like, fuck, I need I need something, and Blake basically had like the gold pass. Yeah, yeah, that's an all time Blake move. Like that's why you're a ride or die guy. I still have the pass. Anything for you, Hank. How, yeah. how awesome was that night for you? That had to be a great time. Yeah, I mean, top top five top five nights of my life, too, I'd say. Thanks to Blake. Thanks to Blake. Mm-hmm. Thanks to Blake. Anytime, Hank. Okay. Solid, solid. Um, all right, so I had one last question. It's a rowback question. Promo code TAKE. 20% off your first purchase. Q-zips, polos, hoodies, and the new rowback joggers, which are incredible. If there's one person that we can hate for you, some person who said something or did something during your career, give it to us. We want to just carry the legacy. I know you don't care. Like, you're the most, I don't, you know, whatever, people say shit. But let us. We we do care. And we like to protect our friends. So, just, you know, one person we can put in our back of our brain and be like, yeah, that guy. We'll carry the hate for you. Um, I mean, I don't know if there's many people in sports that like didn't have something negative to say about me at some point while I was playing. <laughs> but like, if there was one person that, uh, dude, I don't even know. You know who hated me? And he, I would, I don't even know him. I would imagine, like, if you asked him, he would be like, "Yeah, that guy sucked." It was Chris Sims? Yeah, yeah he did. Yeah. Sims yeah. hated yeah. me. I saw he somebody show me a list one time. He ranked me as like the 47th best quarterback in the NFL. And I was starting in Jacksonville, and I was like, he's got 15 backups ranked ahead of me as a, mm-hmm. as a quarterback in the NFL. Yeah. That, that guy really did not like me. Yeah, I, I felt like there was a, a moment in time where people, like, basically propelled their career by being like, Blake Bortles sucks. Yeah, it was an easy one, you know, and I respect it. You got to do what you got to do to advance in your profession. I didn't really care, but, um Yeah. Okay, I and then agree. one guy, one guy who championed you. Like, who's the who's the one guy that was like, oh yeah, that guy always like, he was pretty cool. There was a couple of good local dudes here in Jacksonville that I still keep in touch with. Um, is that who you're talking about, like media people? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Prisco? Like Jeff Jeff Darlington was always great. We love Jeff. Know, the problem was, is I never paid attention to anything. So like if these people could have been, you know, here I am thinking like, what a great relationship we have. And then he's on Twitter, just hammering me. And I'd have no idea. Um, <laughs> Mark Long and Mike D rock, the ESPN guy here in Jacksonville, those two dudes I still talk to. They were always great. I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. What about Prisco? Did you him. ever did Prisco? Prisco wasn't still around. Pete. Was he? It's his first name. Pete, Pete Prisco. Yeah. Yeah, little guy, small guy, yeah. really short, tiny. I'm maybe, really tiny. maybe when I first Put got in your here. pocket, I yeah. can't remember. Okay, yeah, all right. Um, did you ever watch The Good Place? No, I need to. I want to just because, like, it's actually a pretty good show, right? Yeah, that's what you should do. That's what you should do, and take advantage of of the days off that you have. Watch The Good Place right, because they they loved Blake Bortles on that show. Yeah, I think I need to check that out. It was a couple years ago. 17 or 18 ish they asked me to come do like a little special thing in there because some guys a massive jacksonville fan in it right yeah um and it didn't work out i was it was in la and i was leaving la but yeah i might need to watch that um the other thing that i had was you remember that highlight when you were running against the pittsburgh steelers and, and somebody just absolutely leveled that dude and you started smiling and laughing in the middle of the play yeah it was tj yelled and hit mike mitchell and uh, I do remember that. It was on our sideline. It was awesome. I think it was a yeah. third down, too. Yeah. Yeah. So There's also the, yeah. Fun things happen. You can't help but laugh while it's going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's also a picture you know, of you in the a- Hall of Fame. That You know that, right? There's a picture of you in the Hall of Fame with your like tongue out getting just smoked. Uh, yeah. By who? You're in somebody, it's not somebody that's in the Hall of Fame. I don't know. I can't remember. It's just I, a random picture. Yeah, didn't we take that picture? There was like a picture of you getting just absolutely leveled. And I, can't, I can't remember. <laughs> let, me, let me look it up. Um, as I look this up, do you know just off the top of your head who the number three all-time uh, ranked player in yards per carry is in the NFL? Three? Yeah. No. 
I'm on I there somewhere, it, right? I think it's you. Am I third all time? I think it's you. Maybe maybe just for quarterbacks. And what this was before Lamar stat. Jackson. You know what yeah. needs to be the next is like guys that ran. Although there's probably nobody else even on that list that ran a four nine forty at the combine. Yeah, but you you were just efficient. Yeah, definitely. Dude. Yeah, the slowest guy by far. You know what? It was all the the uh, I used to call it something else. The tackle the man with the football. You play as a kid. You know, growing up. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Get that's the guy what, with the ball. That's what we called it. Yeah. Just get that's that right. guy with the football. Uh huh. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. You might you might actually be the most efficient runner in the history of the NFL when you take into account your speed versus the amount of yards you were able to cover. Yeah. I mean, it's a wild stat that I'm on oh, yeah. that list. Who is, who is like one? Is that someone There's, like Michael Vick or somebody? I think Vick might be number one or two. And the like other guy. Like Randall Cunningham? The other guy played in like 1950, I think. Okay. Um, Bar, Bar Star? Yeah, something, like, something that. like that. Yeah. Yeah, but you're oh, up George there. George Mira. Then, oh, George, yeah. Yeah, yeah old Georgie. Forget. And then Mike Vick. <laughs> and then and then Blake Bortles. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. That is cool. That, that's yeah. pretty wild. Well, um, Blake, I mean, you have to – we'll keep in touch. I do also just want to say to end it, like, thank you, because you you bought in with us very early on, and that, that was big. Like, that that's one of those things that when we think about, like, the history of part of my take, you being cool – and wanting to come on um, was a big deal for us, and it still is a big deal. So you should yeah. you should definitely know that that's like part of you're not only part of NFL history. Like you can't write the story of part of my take without Blake Bortles. You're in the part of my take Hall of Fame. I'm honored to be a part of it, man. You we guys should. have always been great. Um, thanks for you know being a friend to me, sticking up for me. You're gonna make me emotional. Uh, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for sh- thanks for sharing your fans. You know, I got I feel like a lot of fans from you guys that were great. Uh, we had great times, and I was I mean, what you guys have done is so cool, and it was such a non-normal thing in sports media at the time. Everything was so buttoned up, and quarterbacks always had to give the politically correct down the line answer. So being able to talk with you guys and kind of let it fly a little bit to me was always something that was really enjoyable. Yeah. Yes. Th- honestly, honestly, thank you. I appreciate everything yes. that you've done for us. You didn't have to a lot of these times, so it's been it's been great to to build this relationship with you. And I know that you're going to be great um, on the senior tour. Yeah, in, being what, retired f- fifteen years. Yeah, yeah, so, you're going to be a great twenty forty two. Let's go. Okay, hashtag twenty forty two. We'll caddy for you. We'll caddy. Dude, for I you. also uh, last thing. Um, my parents still live in Orlando. There's like a fake Twitter account that's my name. And for whatever reason, stuff like this is still happening. But it tweeted out, you know, after the thing came out, retired. I'm going to pursue what I've always wanted to do is, you know, riding equestrian horses and get ready for 2024 20, Olympics in Paris, France. But like the news stations in Orlando were like running it all afternoon <laughs> that I was training for the Olympics in 2024 for Paris to ride equestrian. <laughs> so are you saying you're not? No, I might. <laughs> okay, all right, good, good. So rerun it, rerun it. That's right. He's yeah. not closing the door. <laughs> yeah, no, we'll stick to that. No, but thank you guys, man. You guys are the best. Always have been. All right, all right. Thank thanks, you, Blake. Blake. Love we, you, man. We you will put you in the part of my take you, Hall of Fame. Yes. You'll be the first inductee.